everyone and welcome to the program. This is Sunday Politics live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Kimale in Abuja. The ruling of Progressive Congress APC is now face to face with destiny. The fate of the party is now in its own hand and the next few weeks will determine just how it will weather the storm that is raging so fast and it might bring with it some wild wind and perhaps some political thunderstorm. The opposition PDP are taunted the ruling APC that it is not capable of conducting a national convention. But the APC's test of doing just that is now imminent. It started first with a headache of determining the date of the convention. And here is the national chairman of the Kiatake community, Governor Mayor Malabuni, making that announcement at an event earlier this week. Take a listen to him. Thank you, Dad. Let's get this gesture by supporting women and youth in their political aspirations and to realize their political dreams. We look forward to having more women contesting in the forthcoming National Convention of the Party from February 26, 2022, and the general election. Now, as we approach the convention, and moving closer to the next general election, I wish to remind you of your progressive roles in supporting progressive-minded leaders aspiring for various offices for the betterment of our country. Well, that's uh, the national chairman of the APC Kiatika community. Well, the secretary of the party, uh, Senator Hakpan Udwade, explained further on the plans for the national convention and the date that has now been fixed, the 26th day of February 2022. Take a listen to Senator Udo there. Political committee dropped the extraordinary convention committee. They have asked me to announce the date of convention. The date of convention authoritatively as mandated by the committee, is fixed on the 26th of February. And we also consider subcommittees for the convention. Details will be given shortly. The names, chairman and, and, and secretary and deputy secretary and other members of the committee will be announced shortly to you. All right. So all of those plans, uh, they said, will be announced. But then we now know uh, the, we have the breakdown, the schedule of activities of how the national uh, convention will look like, the events that is uh, leading up until the 26th of February. Now, that's what you can see on your screen from uh, when they will receive the interim National Reconciliation Committee report to uh, the inauguration of the executives, when sale of forms will begin, and when for sure um, they can start campaigning and talking about uh, what uh, they can. Uh, those who want to seek office. Well, now that we know the date, the APC will have to figure out how it will cross the hurdle and the Achillean task of electing a national chairman that is capable of leading it into a general election, which is not just far away, not far away in the sense that it may be tagged as 2023 general election, but effectively, it's only voting that you probably will do in 2023. All of the processes leading to an election will happen in 2022. Don't forget that an election is not an event, it is a process. So the Achillean task of electing not just an ordinary national chairman, but one that is effective, capable of leading a party in this storm to um, a formidable uh, contest in 2023 election that posed to be heavily contested. Amidst all of this is uh, the legal contestation over the legitimacy of the office of the Kiatika Committee and that of the chairman of the Kiatika Committee, as several persons have gone to court to challenge the, uh, the Bunin led uh, uh, Kiatika Committee. Well, just a few days ago, the Federal High Court, sitting in Port Harcourt, River State, a few days ago, struck out the suit challenging the competence of the governor, Mayor Mala Bunin led Kiatika Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee of the APC. Tonight, 
we dig deeper into these issues. Perhaps I should show you some of those whom we now hear and understand uh, wanting that seat of the national chairman of the APC. Some of them you know very well. From the former governor of uh, Borough New State, Senator Ali Modu Sharif, to a sitting senator, Senator Sani Musa. Um, there, is, uh, there are other people who are also jostling. A former governor of Nasarawa State, a sitting senator also, Senator Tanko Al Makura, is also in the race. Uh, Mr. Sani Moni Dafe, uh, who claims Nadamawa State, is also in the race, as well as Salih Mustafa. These are some of the five people that we know that are in the front running for the national chairmanship seat of the APC. Let's dig deeper into some of these issues. The APC have on its end a very daunting challenge to that it is faced with. These are some of the names of those who are jostling for the national chairman seats that you can see right there on your screen. I have joining me tonight to, uh, to discuss these issues and how the ruling APC uh, will be able to weather the storm in the face of the PDP that is threatening that come 2023, it will send APC packing out of the presidential villa. How will they do that? Is the APC jittery? Senator Abubakar Gada joins us, a chieftain of the APC, as well as Honorable Kletus Oven. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming tonight. Thank That's, you. Thank you. Nice. Thank you for. First and right. foremost, um, I look at some of the names that I see there, uh, the five people that I've heard and understand are running in the race. Uh, some of them will start uh, obtaining forms. Let me begin with you, Senator uh, Gada. Um, what does it take, or what will it take? For anybody to, it does look like your party is not in the best shape as it is right now. You are you are having a chaotic economy. That means that you're standing on one leg. You're not properly structured. That is what it means by chaotic. So, what does what will it take? Uh, what kind of personality does a party need to steer the affairs going into an election year? Mr. Sam, let me correct you before going into your question. Caretaker committee is solidly standing on proper legs simply because it's a creation of the law. Uh, whatever is created by law cannot be said to be standing in any half leg, one leg, or uh, shaking. Uh, Environment. So, uh, Senator, uh, that's to correct you from that. Senator, there isn't much to correct, anyways. Uh, when you say caretaker, you mean that it is temporary. Yeah. It is not substantive. So, when something is not substantive, that means it is not the real. So, if it is real, you will not no. call it caretaker. See, see, so, when I say see, that it's standing on one leg, like, no, it's no. not standing on the no. full, you see, full Get it correct. You see, you have to respect the laws of the land. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, so, 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 I'm not disputing that yeah. it is not, so, I'm not so disputing you don't, the fact that you don't, it is, you don't, the fact that it's called caretaker. But the question caretaker is that it is a caretaker With full powers Senator, is it? Huh? Is it not caretaker? What is it? It's caretaker with full powers. So, what is the, what's the difference? But if it is foolproof, eh? why is it caretaker? That's no, because that's the, 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 the laws allowed caretaker condition to happen when you are, like you said earlier, starting when you have to start a process that will put somebody or some uh, the leadership eh, of relevant uh, uh, offices uh, into uh, into place. So, well, I mean, in all of so this, what is important the, the big question is, 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 it, is, it, is it a creation of the law? Yes. Do they have the powers to exercise uh, full authority in running the affairs of the party? Yes. Uh, yeah, whatever decision they have taken, is it valid and then it protected by law? Yes. So go ahead with your question, please. <laughs> I've asked a question earlier. Yes. Either in terms of nomenclature mm -hmm. or in terms of administrative structure, yeah. the caretaker is not substantive. Yeah, so uh, either in terms of semantics yeah. or however you want to look yeah. at it, it is caretaker is caretaker. Yeah. But the question is that what will it take your party yeah. 
to, I mean, what kind of personality or character yeah. does your party need mm. to see it affairs? You're going to a very, uh, a keenly, a, a contest that will be keenly yes. contested in 2023, general election. Number one, Mr. Seon, our aspirants, those who are conversing, Conversing for votes or for consent of party members to make them uh, or give them the opportunity to lead the party are eminent Nigerians. Are eminent Nigerians that we have correctly defined in terms of their standing. And these are people who have uh, uh, antecedents. They have their history. They have their records of who they are. And so they will now come out, or they have already come out, to show themselves to uh, the party members that they want to be given an opportunity to lead. I'm asking We, as a leaders, listen. There is a history go, to hold on, hold on. There is a history to some what, what we are, a yeah. Just a moment. There is a history today. Some people will argue that maybe you need former governors. Uh, some of those will say, no, we've had situation. We, we've had former governors mm. eat boomerang in mm. our faces. Um, does the party need a former governor as a national chairman? What we are looking for, he who that the majority of the people accept. That's all. And these people, among them are former governors, among them are serving senators, among them are all manners of uh, uh, credentials. So uh, it is you cannot just say, Clearly, this is only this is the option you are going for, and the reason, the, the, the good thing about it, they are all out, so they have their manifestos, they have the responsibility to prove to party members that they are really uh, here for business and they meant it, and they have a feeling or they have the capacity to see the greater future. The challenges ahead of us as a political party. And then look at what they have. Look at the type of how sagacious they are, how tenacious they are individually to be able to meet the dreams of the Nigerian uh, nation uh, uh, for providing an atmosphere that will continue or will, will allow us to continue to dominate the scene as we are dominating the scene and we have already dominated and will continue to dominate. So leaders have the challenge to sustain the tempo on which we are moving. Mm. And Let so, me bring in uh, uh, Honorable uh, Klaatu's open into the conversation. Uh, uh, you, you know very much the, what happened uh, in the Adam Shumale era in the party. Um, your party can it afford any error, uh, any slip this time around? I don't know what happened in the uh, uh, Oshimole era that you consider, or that is in the positive. That you could not have finish up the, uh, the term before the caretaker committee uh, came into place. Yeah, uh, precisely the power maker, whether it's on the negative or positive side, we have the positives and the negatives to learn from what happened with the Oshimole era. But you can say that it was one of the best periods of our political experience in terms, if you compare it to what happened to us in 2015, in which we won the majority in the Senate and uh, became opposition in the Senate. And then uh, the Oshimole era brought us and rendered everybody to say, look, party supremacy must be maintained. That is the kind of character when you ask about what kind of person do you expect. It is not because he was a former governor. It is because it is in his nature to be so. So the next chairman we are expecting is a chairman that first will possess the will, the favor, the integrity, the zeal for democracy first, before even party. Democracy, what is his background, democratic background credentials in terms of, if you say former governors have always maintained that they are even easier to assess because what they did in their state and with their parties running them will tell us what they are going to do with the national party as chairman. And secondly, the character of the person. Most of them still hold office either as senators or ministers. Uh, one of them uh, is a serving minister. I don't know if you mentioned him uh, from Benue State, the former governor of Benue State, uh, We have the former governor of, uh, um, Nasarawa. of, of Nasarawa State. We have a sitting senator, uh, Belo, I mean, uh, yes, in, uh, 
in um, in Mina in um, Niger State. And uh, we, indeed, you should also notice that most of these former governors and ministers are also former senators. Some sitting, some former, some former governors. And so we have a grand mix. And then we have people like Sonny Moni Edafe, who was a former state chairman who has been a, an organizer for the party and who has been FCT chairman for that matter. So he has sat at the middle of activities and action in the country. So as far as I'm concerned, APC is parading the best that you can ever get. And we have not seen the end. I suspect and I expect that more people will come out and give us a wider field to operate. So APC is at no time in lack about quality and in terms of delivery. Because for, for those who say that the APC will face the fiercest contest in 2023 compared to any of the elections in Iran, whether in 2015 or 2019. And as such, you probably will need someone who is tough, who is ready for war, and who is ready to win for the party. For your information, the, the, the war, the, the battle for the winning of 2023 lies on APC more than its opponent. APC has to rely in itself search itself, discover itself, and come out as an organic whole. If you are a student of chemistry, you know that when organic molecules are gathering for action and momentum, for action and reaction within a, a chemical uh, action or within a, an experimental period, you will discover that they come as a whole and move in like bees and then swarm in on a particular object or element. That is what APC has to do. So the opponent of APC will be APC. It will not be PDP. As far as I'm concerned, PDP has sufficiently shown that, in fact, I'm so grossly disappointed that as an opposition party, it has failed itself. So when you deal with the issue of governance issue or, uh, for APC, you do the not giving, because opposition in some sense is an energizer, as in an, it's an elixir for a, governing, a government and for a party in government. APC demonstrated it against PDP before 2015, and it gave them power. We are not seeing that from PDP because whatever they give to us is like, as opposition, should be something like free consultancy. All right. Look, so, this is the alternative to what so, you are doing. This is what you ought to do. You are not doing it. We're not seeing that from PDP. So, so, so that's so not so our opponent. You are opponents. blaming PDP for... They are, they are not our opponents. Our <laughs> opponent is APC. APC is the opponent yeah, of APC. You are your own opponent. And yes. Your op and we are uh, dealing with that situation now. Yes, we are dealing with that situation. Would you think, I mean, would you suggest that your party should consider consensus for the national chairmanship uh, contest? Whatever option. You see, the good thing about it, the law has created all these options. We have consensus, we have direct and indirect. So as we go along, whatever option is in the best interest of the party is what we will do. I'm asking this because I know and you know, Senator and Honorable, you know what it means when you go in the, uh, in the arena with five, six, seven people running for a national chairmanship position, it is a tough one. And sometimes people have said, oh, look at the way PDP have done their own. They went into that see, contest see. mostly in consensus. Look I mean, at, look it's at. easier for the party yeah. to come together as a caucus, as a, as a neck, as a party uh, leaders in their own groups and say, let us have a consensus. How easy would that be for your party? At every level, my brother have said, at every level of discourse and activity, APC has demonstrated the capacity to hold itself together. And so these men you are seeing, they are celebrities within the political cycle, and they are men of great capabilities. They are, they have, I can assure you, they have the party at heart much more than their individual's ambition. And so the, the, the mere fact that you are out to contest an election with the other competitors, and then the ultimate objective is to have a greater, stronger, more vibrant political party that will sustain the power, win elections, and continue the dominance over Nigeria's landscape. So these people, uh, Mr. Sim, they are ready to see the interests of the party much more than the interests of individual uh, So people, contestants. everybody should just go to the arena and contest. Would you suggest that? No, no, let me say this. Uh, you must know the political history of APC as a progressive party and know that the aggregation of those who came together to form what you call APC today are seasoned political strategists. In 2014, when we were going for the National Convention, 
what was happening and which is what we did was zone the offices to each geopolitical zone. The geopolitical zone goes there to micro zone to the states. The state knowing the three central districts, micro zone to the central district. And in bringing out candidates, every person is allowed to come into the poll. And there is an appeal by the caucuses of the different levels to appeal to those who have to concede. I remember that up to the point where we elected Mme. Malabuni as national secretary, Bulama, one uh, Waziri Bulama, an architect, was in the forefront of it. But when the Northeast went behind at Eagle Square, they came out with Mema Labuni then, as he then was, as secretary, and there was no rancor. We went into the 2018 Congress uh, convention. Again, Oshomole came in, and there were other contentions. In my state, for example, the position of national, I mean, zonal organizing secretary and vice, national vice chairman became so contentious. But at the end of it, at the end of it, and what was the what was the trick and what was the catch? Each state is given the option to choose the what it wants. Do you want direct, indirect, or do you want consensus? Each state does that. Then at the national level, the national caucus of the party, made up of former governors and everybody, former uh, leaders of the national assembly, all make up that national caucus, and including the president. They come out and then get everybody in to buy into the idea of a consensus. So we have never suffered the issue of intractable, irredeemable crisis of consensus or options for taking part. We've done two conventions. One was 2014, and the other one in 2018. This last one, this is the next one we're going to do. We've always gone through consensus, and we've never had any workout. Mm. Workout, uh, what, the, uh, what they call impunity, is only the badge of uh, PDP. It is never uh, part of APC. But, but one of the issues is the judgment uh, that came out of the Federal High Court in, in River State in Port Harcourt. But that's just one. There are several other people who have gone on similar to, uh, similar position to go to court to challenge the, the Boone led uh, Katika committee. What's your, I mean, is this going to be an abatros on the neck of uh, the APC Katika committee? These uh, court cases. Yes. This is where APC has demonstrated its capacity and its energy for democracy, for democratic space, and allowing people to ventilate their anger and ventilate their democratic rights. Elsewhere, that would have automatically limited. The Constitution says once you go to court, you are out if you don't exhaust the internal mechanisms for, for internal resolution of crisis. But you can find that even the people going to court, the courts themselves have settled that matter. In fact, that's one of the biggest advantages that would make for consensus and make consensus very easy. How? Between December 22nd and February 22nd, which was Thursday last week, or was it Friday? Yes, 22nd. Exactly 30 days in between. Two court judgments. In fact, two of them came from Delta State, and this last one on the 22nd of January 2022 came in from River State. All were saying the same thing. If you read the Supreme Court judgment, which have been grossly misinterpreted for mischief purposes and to generate undue tension within the APC, you find the same thing. I don't want to get clashing with it. Incidentally, Justice Emmanuel Agim, who took the lead judgment, took his time to dissect each, including sections of both the Electoral Act, and cited decided cases before even this one. All was a validation and confirmation of what had been confirmed by both the Supreme Court and the lower courts. And most of the times, they were even supporting the position of the appeal court or the high court in some instances. So the question about, in fact, it has helped APC to now know that May Malabuni, like punctual person will say, I find no fault in this man. Let him go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Otherwise, the only other alternative that would have been happening to us, which is what the convention is going to do for us, and I, I don't want to preempt it, but for now, 26 is sacrosanct, 26 must stand, and as we go into that 26, our fears is that they shouldn't open a floodgate where more people are going to now take, because on May Malabuni, the courts have decided, and with finality, from the highest to the lowest court, that the man has no case to answer about the validity of his position and whatever he's doing. So we have very little to do with litigations anymore because they have exhausted themselves. At the last count, you were saying two or three, there are about five judgments already. Four by lower courts in the last one month, two. In the last uh, 30 days, three cases. Before then, about four or five. There are some still pending on the same subject matter. 
some within states deciding on the same matter. They are all going on. So our position is that this has limited for us and shut out everybody to say, look, the courts have taken a position. If you are going there, you are going for an academic exercise because the validity and legality of the Ketega Committee has been established. What we should be doing as a party, which is what made me to make a preemptive statement to the effect that the opponent of APC will be APC, where three categories of persons exist. The first group is the group that wants to win election under APC by any means and not any other party. The second group is the one that wants the party and democracy to grow using APC. The third group are the habitual political power mongers who are in power for power's sake and whose own ambition is that they are to be paid as political jobbers to ensure that democracy does not sustain. And you can find them across the parties. So if they come to PDP today, they generate the same crisis. They come to APC, generate the same type of crisis, going to court and for forum shopping. In one case, they're in Kanu, in Sokoto, in Delta. Then on the same matter, they forum shop to that extent. Right. Thank God for what has happened. You, 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 you'll be optimistic uh, should this case, uh, some of these case, uh, cases end at the lower court if they're not being appealed. But, but the big question is whether or not we are not seeing much of this, because in the past, when there are court cases over the I mean, a lot of people already are grieved about the date that has been chosen by the Kataka Committee for the National Convention, the processes, the issue of the zoning. These are some of the issues leading to, um, do you see any, 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 any loop or uh, any problem leading up to the National Convention of 26th of February? No, not at all. You're optimistic. Absolutely. Where do you think this zo the zone, you see, this the zoning is a, of the chairmanship should yeah. be? No. You see, zoning is there as a as a principle in our uh, party politics, and indeed, even uh, in, the uh, in the in the in the in the it's not in the constitution uh, uh, of the country, but uh, is there for political party to decide, and because we all have no issue about rotot I mean, uh, uh, a rotation, and that is zoning. And, and that is why political parties, in their own wisdom, will sit down always and zone their positions. So with that in practice, with that a subtle issue, we don't have any problem whatsoever. You can see clearly, uh, Simu, even if you, uh, anybody who want to create any by imagination, by whatever, by doomsday analysis, it, it will come to nothing. APC will go as we are on track, will go, I mean, smoothly uh, to the end and uh, continue. Just my brother won't have already said earlier that once we, we put our house in order, hmm, we don't have any opposition uh, within the polity. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, one last matter that I would like us to deal with is whether or not your party can confront the PDP and the, um, the possible emergence of a, of a thought first, which we're understanding is cooking in the corner. Um, we'll take a break and we'll wrap up on that note. Okay. The reality on the ground, Mr. Shewon, you do not even need to ask this question. Why? Governors, state governments, AP, PDP governors, you no, know, are moving in mass into what? Into APC. There are only How, two of them when you say mass. Well, is it only? Two, I mean, I'm just saying, when, uh, when you use they, the they words have, mass. No, they have uh, mass followership. They, they have mass followership. OK, they, uh, Senator, uh, we, we need to take a breather. When we come back, that's going to be uh, the point where we're going to wrap up on the conversation tonight. But stay with me, everyone. We get the closing thoughts of my guests here uh, on the issue of the APC, whether or not the party is ready for a 2023 presidential contest, the kind of people that they will be putting forward, and when the PDP says they're coming to take them out of prominence at the center in 2023, what does this mean? We'll take a break, and also when we return, Senator Mao Ohabua will be joining me later, and the quest of the PDP to retake power from the APC in 2023 takes our attention to some national issues. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us right here on the program. 
So we're talking about the internal affairs of the APC. Uh, I showed you five names of those who are, uh, we will know for now, that are running for the number one seat in the APC. That is uh, the national chairmanship seat, uh, which will be in contest uh, on the 26th of February 2022. Of course, uh, we also know that Senator George Akume, who is as a sitting minister, former senator, is also in the race, as well as the names that you can see right there on your screen. But let's wrap up the conversation with the two gentlemen, where we meet Senator Abu Bakr Gada and Honorable Kletus Oban. Both of them are chieftains of the APC. The big question here, as we wrap up, is, is your party ready? for the context of 2023, considering what the AP, PDP has gone to town to say, that your party has left Nigeria uh, in worse shape than they met it, and that they are coming to rebuild Nigeria and to take it away from your, from your grip. Uh, Honorable Auburn, let me, let me begin with you this time. Well, uh, let me say that uh, the PDP is free to masturbate about its uh, chances. That's a gross word to use yes, on TV. Yes, because anyways. clearly, because uh, when you get into this state of euphoria to make yourself bigger than you are, magnifying yourself to this point, it's dangerous. The only point I must make the, tonight in conclusion is that it is dangerous enough to have Congresses, convention, and primaries 12, seven months to an election. That is the only challenge APC will have. But thereafter, like uh, the senator has made out, and we all know, we know our party members, and we know that the president is sitting with us, we are going to ensure that APC is going to come out stronger as soon as the convention matter is settled. Like I said, the issue that we are afraid of was litigation. But with the litigation out of the way, it has clearly shown us that APC has a chance of getting roughshod Without an opposition, and I insist the opposition APC will have is APC, never PDP, because APC as it is, uh, PDP as it is today is a ragtag army. You don't think zoning might be another issue for your party on, on the decision? On Look the at your go. list. Look at your list. It points to you that the party members know I'm what I'm even saying that, uh, in choosing the presidential candidate. This is what I'm saying. By our own, the mere fact that about seven or six persons have come out, and all of them are from north central, north east, north west, tells you clearly that the party already has an understanding which uh, legality cannot help because the people that are here are progressive-minded and what they want is power for the sake of the people. And, and I want to uh, quickly bring up this. It's a very interesting scenario. So some, some I mean, like Senator Kwonkron, so some people who have argued in the PDP that as far as they're concerned, the North has not had its time in the PDP, the last president of the P uh, from the PDP extraction is President Gulag Jonathan from the South South. So some, there are some people in the PDP who think that legitimately the North should have the, a, a turn in the, uh, will, be, will, will become president of Nigeria in 2023. And so you know what that means, uh, the 19 uh, northern state versus the 17 southern state. And you know the numbers, the Kano, the Bauchi, the Katuna numbers, and the Borno numbers when they come up in the general elections, what this all means. So the big question is, uh, is your party torn in between Looking at what the PDP, for example, is thinking, if they come up with a northern presidential candidate, will your party be able to... How would your party react to such? That I, will, I will tell you this. In 2011, don't forget that this same knot canvassed. I was in Jigawa, I was in Yobe. This same knot canvassed in a manner that a southern candidate was against a northern candidate in, in PDP. That was Jonathan. How did Jonathan win his uh, first term, the, his term in, in office? It was from the north. So the country has gone beyond a sharp, divided north, monolithic north, in which you carry everybody and put in one basket and call him north, or one person in, this, in one basket and say south. Nigeria has gone beyond that right from the time of the SDP when, uh, when um, uh, Mushud Abiola won his election to the point of Jonathan. On every electric pole between Benishek and Damaturu, between Benishek and Meduguri, there was the, f the posters of Jonathan as candidate of PDP. In the primaries here in Abuja, you remember, some hotels were shut down by one particular presidential, uh, perennial presidential candidate. 
he couldn't just get his way through. The figures didn't come from Bayelsa. The figures didn't come from Rivers. The figures came from Nigeria. Nigerians are now wiser than using the divide of North and South, Muslim and Christian, and ethnic jingoism to campaign. It has gone beyond that point. And I think Nigerians are wiser and want their peace. Everybody who belongs here, if you have ever stepped out of this country, you will know what it means to see green, white, green flag anywhere on earth. All As right. a kid, when we were taken out for a Marxist program in Bulgaria, I saw a Nigerian flag and I started weeping because I didn't believe at that time, I was just about 19, I couldn't believe that Nigerian flag would be in Bulgaria. And I was weeping for joy that my country was here. All right. So, uh, on a final note, beyond that. Senator, your, I mean, the PDP has thrown a threat at your party. Now get ready. Get ready to pack out of uh, the presidential villa. Are you trying to get a uh, haulage to Mr. get your Mr. Sir, you see, I saw, I saw, I saw a, a chieftain of uh, PDP around. When he comes, ask him, have they finished their convention? This is a party that cannot even conduct their convention, I mean, conclusively. You are talking of taking on power. How? They have asked him. I don't understand. Yes, because the, the, they the, had their convention. It's you they had their convention. They, ha they finished their con without zonal congresses. Some constitutionally created level or strata of the party were not at Abuja for the convention. Why? Because there are processes in the Northwest. I know for sure that they, they had convention before the Congresses, before the decision. Ask them who is their zonal chairman from the Northwest, large as the Northwest is. So, in short, your so, APC so, listen, is not listen, trying to get a listen, haulage listen, to well, get your a party, things out a of party the villa. That a, You're not ready to go so, yet. Yeah, no, because no, you, party, you remember look, the PDP asking, boasted at the time. A party that cannot conduct. going to say for more than 60 same, years in a power. A party that cannot conduct a convention, ordinary convention. And then many segments were not attended to delegates from that aspect. If somebody, if, if I'm a member of PDP, I will take them to court because they have not, I mean, there is this, uh, I mean, you, you are disenfranchised. Uh, those candidates, those delegates that All ought right. to have emanated from, you know, respective Senator, zones. Senator, we, we need to wrap up now because we need to, so, to so, turn to the, to the no, PDP. No, I'm asking you. I'm look at what's the, happening in the PDP. Yes, Your no, party, when they come, since you are, them, since you are them, not ready when, when to get they, out of the villa, yes. let's ask the PDP how ready they are to move into the no, villa. They, they, because they, they, they say they, they want to move no, into the villa. It is up to Nigerians to decide anyways. APC said you have not finished your convention in court. No, APC said in court. Tell them, APC said that you have not even finished your convention. So you talk oh. back again, huh? Honorable <laughs> God, so thank you, gentlemen. So, they should be It's a non-issue at all. all they should be back uh, well, well, Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming. We, we, let's now turn into the affairs of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. First, the party was in Lagos, and when they were in Lagos, they had uh, a rally receiving um, some members of the APC, the Lagos for Lagos, uh, who defected from the APC to the PDP. And, uh, well, they, they sent a stern warning to the APC that it will remove it from prominence with the defection of the Lagos for Lagos group led by Gidi Adediron, who took his supporters from the APC to the PDP. Take a listen to some of the sound bites at that rally in Lagos. PDP loves you. I love you. Lagos for Lagos. Nigeria for Nigeria. PDP for Nigeria. Let me tell you, my brothers, I'm a Lagosian. I lived in Lagos for many years. I was happy. Today I know you are not happy because you gave your life away to people who deceive you about change. Are you enjoying the change? Are you enjoying the change? How much is a bag of rice? No more slavery in Lagos. We thank you for coming over for PDP. Go back and tell everybody 
that this time next year, we are coming back to celebrate a PDP governor in Lagos. Is it not so? All right, that's the national chairman of the PDP, Senator Yocha Ayu. The following day, some of the leaders of the PDP visited the former president, Ulusha Gwambasanjo, in uh, Ogun State. As the election draws closer, you know, one may not be surprised at such kind of visit. But take a listen to the reasons for the visit. I retired uh, 14 years ago. Um, and I remain retired, and I will remain retired by the grace of God. But if I retire from partisan politics, if politics is the welfare of people, I must not retire from the welfare and well-being of people. Whether in my own community, in my own state, in my own country, anywhere in Africa, or indeed anywhere in the world. And that's why I have the type of responsibility that I now have in the Horn of Africa. I will say that your own responsibility is not an easy one either, but it has to be done. But bear in mind, and I will want to emphasize that, I'm no longer in partisan politics, and there's nothing that will bring me back to partisan politics. But I will always be interested in what is good for Nigeria. And anybody who wants to have my advice, I will instinctively give it. Former President Olusha Gwambasanjo, let's take a dive into the issues of, uh, thrown up by the activists of the People's Democratic Party. Senator Mao Abuwa joins us now. Thank you so much, Senator. It's good to see you. It's been a while. Oh, honestly, it's my <laughs> pleasure to share with you. But you've been doing very well. Thank you so you've much, been Senator. At least keeping us abreast of what is happening politically in our country. Thank you and so much. And we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Senator, the body language, if we may use that term, of yeah. former President Obasanjo, who perhaps some of the members of your party visiting him would have thought that uh, it would be more supportive, not, I mean, there's, there's a sense of uh, this dismissiveness that come in, in the language that was used. Um, uh, what do you make of that visit and the response from the former president? No, no, I don't think so. First and foremost, the visit is a continuation of a process, like you said, of taking over the leadership of this country. That is, you saw this is a process and a program that started with our convention, which was seamless, smooth, conclusive. I'll be it what Senator Gada said. Well, Gada should go and face his problem because <laughs> we have pushed them into planning to have an, uh, a convention which they were not prepared. And I can't see how they can conclude that effectively and smoothly. You know, but I think they are taking from us a cue from PDP. So it's a continuation of that. After that, you know that we had a retreat preparing the new NWC members and NEC on how to take over and run party activities. Then you saw we started moving from one state to the other. You saw what happened in Lagos. You saw it never happened like that before in Lagos. You had the speeches. You had the chairman saying, look, era of slavery is gone. And you saw Adeniro and his group, uh, PDP for Lagos for Lagos. Lagos for Lagos. What has you did anybody to tell? How easy will a PDP be able to take over Lagos from? Well, Lagos? you can see it has started. We've never had this kind of rally. This is not even a rally per se, but you could see the mammoth turnout, the crowd of persons and the caliber of persons. This is the first time we're having, uh, uh, will I call it a reception uh, for? Um, those who are finding their way back to PDP, and almost all the governors of PDP were all present. Then after that, we started the consultation. First and foremost, like Obasanjo, hate Obasanjo, he's a leader in Africa, and he says it the way it is. Like you've heard him say, you should read in between lines. He said that, as far as he's concerned, 
democracy, live about democracy for the people by the people. His own definition, he said, is for the welfare and well-being of the people. And he has told the chairman that what you're doing, I know is not an easy, it's going to be a, 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 a difficult task. But I will be there for you. So I don't know what else you expect him to say. He has said this before, that he's no more, and at his level, you don't expect him to play partisan politics. And this is not the first time he has come out to speak about the ills of this present uh, so, government. Senator, so, how easy yes. will it be for your party? Yeah. I mean, beating twice, 2015, 2019, yes. for your party would have said 60 years or more you're going to be in power. Yes. Maybe your party meant 16 years because the 60 <laughs> years turned out to be 16 years. How is it this time around? No, no, no. Well, we, I don't think the party spoke as a party. But I think maybe some party members wished that the party should remain in government for 60 years. But it's good it happened this way because we have learned. Today I want to tell you that Nigerians are the ones now yearning for PDP to come back. Really? Yeah, the you ones? could see what happened here before I came in. They have said it all. When a member of APC, according to your intro, intro APC chieftain, say that as we speak, six, seven years, they are yet to form an organic monaco. He said it so. So which means any moment from now, they would, they would disintegrate and dissolve. I didn't say. He said so, that they want to. So you Six see, you see APC I mean, going to uh, turn apart. No, do you need a prophet? Shane, do you need what a prophet? What makes you think so? No, Shane, you, see, you can see everything falling apart. You it's, saw a caretaker after, com after you them a question. After President Buhari A caretaker term? committee. A caretaker is something that is, uh, 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 how do I call it? It's, 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 it's an abnormality. It's not something that is constant. It's not substantive. It's something that should be transcend just for a while. It's just like acting capacity. How many years now? And not just a caretaker. It was also called caretaker and convention planning committee, which means you already had the hope of planning a convention. They were given six months. Six months to eight months, eight months to 10 months, 10 months to 12 months, and it's endless. They are trying now again to say, look, 26 might not hold. Maybe some of them are not aware because uh, INEC had fixed some by elections. By elections. Looking for excuses here and there. So for me, it's very, very clear that APC is not prepared. Do you think, They are Senator? not ready. And Nigeria, every day they, they, they work for PDP as far as I'm concerned. Senator, yes. do you think that your party might consider, because I, I brought up that matter of the zoning, yes. whether or not the PDP think that uh, it's a time for the North in their own party and that, look, we're not, we not included in the President Buhari yes. Northwest slot yes. that, have been taking, that would have been taken at the end of 2023 for eight years. Well, first of all, like I said, you remember that at the time of our convention, the issue of zoning came up and it heated the polity. Uh, the leadership of PDP, in its wisdom, decided that let's finish the convention. And at the convention, it was decided that every post that was resided in the regional south should go to the regional north. And every position residing in the regional north should come to the south. And we decided to leave that of presidency because he said, when we get to the bridge, we cross it. For now, we don't want to overheat the system. Let those who are interested come out. Because when you say, when you decide to say, look, we want to zoom, you are zoning to east, west, north, and south. Who are the people? Let's have the candidates. But well, Senator, in the practical terms, yes, you've yes. been in the National Assembly. Yes, yes. And the Constitution is very clear about yes. the issues of federal character. Yes, yes. This, this is captured in it, not for... The crafters of, this, of the Constitution were thinking about how wealth can be distributed, how things can be you done fairly. You have taken the word In of, your own yes. wisdom, Senator, where do you think is fairly just yes, yes. for Nigeria to yes, go? Like I said, to, you've taken the word out of region? my mouth. Like we have been saying, even the nepotic system of appointments in this country today, we have already said there, the Federal Character Commission is there. And the Federal Character is an organ of the government constitutionally to ensure that you divide position, wealth, and what have you within the, around the country. Now for us in, in, um, in PDP, we have two options. One is to sit down 
and zone this position. Yes, we've not been in power. APC was in power or had been in power for seven years now. We were not in power or we've not been in power for the past seven years. So we have option that. One, we sit down as a party and zone this position. Look, I tell people, I'm from the Southeast. If you want to say, rightly, you want to be emotional, you want to say, where should this position go to? You talk about Southeast. But for now, um, the position, as far as our concern is concerned, is still not an South. It's now when PDP decide that it's going to South, then the, the, the geopolitical zones within the South will sit down and decide it will go to East, West, or South, South. Now, if PDP decide that it's going to the North, the North will also sit down and microzone it. All right. But for now, we're waiting for the PDP, the leadership, to sit down and decide which way are we S going. Are we S going North? S Senator. Are we going south? But let me conclude with what you've said. You see, people should not be linking us with APC. Zoning, as far as party is concerned, it's a party affair. In political party zoning is not in the concern of Nigeria. It's a political party. And the political party like PDP, I belong, has said, not south, not south, not the right. geopolitical zones we, we, for now. We need to close and just in 30 seconds. Yes. You are leader of the PDP in the southeast. Yes. The big question people are asking, yes. people from the south is, yes. are your people ready? Even if you're given the opportunity, yes. this kind of opportunity are not given. Yes, let, me, take it. let me tell you that, why, why, not even today, even while I was in the House of Reps, not before Senate, a lot of my friends had asked me this question. Uh, Senator Mao, Honorable Mao, or leader, every time you want a, 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 a president of Nigeria from the Southeast extraction, who are the ones? Who are the people? They kept mentioning few names. And as far as I'm concerned, Mao Huabuma will be the last person then to come and stand out to speak for those people to be presidents of Nigeria. If you listen to what is his name, the former Nimas, uh, NMA, NMA DG, the popular uh, Buba, Buba. Yeah. He said until a good Igbo man, that war should be underlined. Good Igbo man. And today, you can see that some prominent, credible Igbo people are coming out. So which means at the point of zoning, they will be considered. So but when the they don't the come Ibos. out, when they don't come out, you stay behind. You allow, well, I wouldn't call them charlatans, but people who are not well-bred Igbo people, who cannot represent us effectively, coming to say they want to run for You think this is a time for the Igbo? I believe so. Right. I believe so. I believe so. But after the zoning by PDP, they will take a shot. But I want to assure you, really, that with the caliber of NWC today, membership of NWC today, I'm quite convinced that they are able and capable All right. to lead us to take back our position at the, at the villa. Come 22. Senator Mao, it's very good to see you again. It's been a while, yeah. and I hope that we'll see more of you yeah. in the coming days. Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. Sir. Thank you so much. Well, My that's pleasure. how we'll leave it tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye for now.